We're having a party here at Comic-Con Live 2014. You know what, we're booth 1032, so come out to Comic-Con and join us. And if you can't, we're bringing the party to you, so keep it locked here. We're on BeTerrific.com, GeekBeat.tv, and Planet5D.com, along with a whole lot of other syndication. Thank you so much for watching. We're just going to keep it moving here. I've got Tony D in the house. Hello. How you doing, Internet. Tony? I'm doing good. Yeah, we. I mean, we got the beat going on that opening graphic. I like that opening graphic. It kinda... Thank you. I, I like to keep a good rhythm going on, especially when I'm creating, and I'm creating many web comics these days. You create a ton of web comics. I do. How do you keep up with the pace? That's what I don't understand. It's hard. Yeah. It's very hard, and I'm glad you asked because no one asked, and I work very hard, and no one ever gives me any credit. So you're, thank you. <laughs> you're welcome. Uh, you're like Crazy Eddie here. I work very hard, <laughs> and I'm glad you asked. Yeah, I don't get any respect. No hey, respect at all. There you go. Um, hey. But uh, yeah, I mean, I usually have about, uh, we have about 27 different web comics on the site currently. Okay. We've got three or four more in, in the works. And, and the site is thewebfactory.com. Thewebcomicfactory.com, the web, web, yeah. Webcomicfactory.com. Here it is on our little, our little oh, post-it pad. We have post that, pad, that's for right. you. Thank you. And this is one of our comics here, Post-Apocalyptic right. Nick, which we did it. as a Kickstarter. And uh, you can read some of that online, and then the extras are in the book. How do you like the Kickstarter? I mean, a lot of, a lot of people want to start writing comic books. A lot of fans want to start writing. Everybody says they were a fan. Is Kickstarter a good way to do it? Kickstarter's a good way to do it. Uh, understand that it's changed. When it first came out, it was more of a novelty. Now all these celebrities have jumped on board. They're millionaires. They don't want to spend their own money. And, you know, so it's, the dynamic is it's much more competitive now much more right. competitive. But that's not the model anymore. The model is web comics. You put your content online for free, you build up an audience, and then you put it in the print and say, hey, come buy it, uh, because you've supported me all this, line, all this time, and uh, hit, you know, I've given you free content, now give me some money. Give me some money, damn it! I like that, yeah. Be dialing. Be what? <laughs> you remember the guy late night who had the baseball cards? Uh, Ken Griffey Jr. Mint Gem Rookie Card. Oh, if you yeah, can yeah, buy yeah. two of these, <laughs> you should be buying two. You can't just buy one. You, you can't have just to buy, buy two. one. Be dialing. That Be was dialing. Yeah, my friend uh, Handsome Jarrett used to call up and say, I'll buy what he's smoking. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever it is, I want that. They'd be like, what? What are you talking about? If you can get me that, I'll buy it. Um, but yeah, he was a fun guy, and that was late night. He also sold the samurai swords. Cool. Yeah. Cool. So, um, Anyway, uh, this is awesome, the webcomic factory. How long does it take to uh, do something like this? Well, that's the great thing about webcomics. You could stretch it over a period of time. What we do on the webcomic factory is we do a different comic every day. So we'll have, in the case of Post-Apocalyptic Nick, we did one strip per week, mm -hmm. and then the rest of the week we had different things. I find that people really like recurring content. What I mean by that is you got to have it regularly coming out. And yeah. so that's what's great about the web is I can have this once a week. I could have this as, as often as you can deliver it. Yeah, and what's great too is you can have the bios of the characters, you can have all these little extras, you have the creator right there uh, giving personal accounts of the process and wh where it's going, you can answer questions. That's pretty you cool. You can take comments. You ever get led by the audience where they're like, hey, you should do this with post-apocalyptic post Nick? Uh, sometimes, I mean, you know, the, the, it depends on the, the, the comic, you know? Yeah. We have different kinds of comics. Post-Apocalyptic Nick was a straight up narrative. It was one contained story. Tell me about him. Uh, Nick is a hapless hip, hipster who's at the end of the world. Uh, he goes on a business trip. I always think that would be the worst thing, seriously. Yeah. Like, no, you, that's what I say, You know, too. people say to me all the time, like, oh, well, I've got this shelter, or I've got this biohazard suit in case the world comes to an end, or they build these fallout shelters. I'm like, you really want to be the only guy around? Yeah, Nick is helpless without his iPhone. Right. And that's what happens. He, he's, like, he's like a terrible guy to be, a, not, not one of these Mad Max guys who could like build stuff. He, Th I mean, that would be me. Yeah, that's exactly, that's I would what be I like, say. I, oh, I got to make my own water now? How yeah. am I doing that? How am I going to order Chinese food? The world's right. ended. Exa who's going to dry clean my clothes? Exactly. I, exactly. I, I couldn't possibly do anything. So I co-wrote this with Christian Baranek and uh, we put it up there every week. Tom Kurzansky's the artist. And uh, that's what we do. And then we have different comics. We have gag -a day strips like uh, In a Relationship, which is just about how horrible relationships are. Uh, I Hate My Kids, which is about how uh, horrible wow. kids are. Yeah. <laughs> you know, Be Terrific is very positive. No, no, it's a positive because it's, a positive, it's funny. It, right, because it's funny. And it, well, it's a good outlet. <laughs> I feel like it's a sign, that sounds like a Seinfeld episode. 
Yeah, yeah, that's kind of what it is. You know yeah. how like Seinfeld was always about hell is uh, hell is other people. Right. And and so it's sort of like that. But I have other stuff too. We have how sports did... guys. We do sports. Yeah. I do the anti-war comic. What's the sports we do guys politics. about? I like that. Sports guys about a, a group of guys at a sports bar and they talk sports. So whatever's topical of the day, we'll uh, we'll do a joke about it. You know whether it's uh, you know the current stuff in the news, which isn't very positive, but. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, you got to watch Be Terrific for positive news. That's right. Yeah. That's right. There is Look positive at, stuff in sports. There is. All I'm doing is shameless plugs right now for <laughs> our own thing that people are watching. But anyway, um, so the sports stuff, though, I mean, like, one of my favorite comics as a kid is this little-known comic called Super Pro. Or it's like this, oh, I remember Super Pro. You remember Pro? Super yeah. Pro. <laughs> I love that comic. And then it went away. Um, but, I mean, do you have anything like that where the, the athlete is a superhero? Well, we don't really do any superhero comics. Yeah. The closest thing I do a superhero comic is called Super Frat, which okay. was my first web comic. It's about a super-powered fraternity. I love that. And uh, all the brothers get superpowers except one. They're really good at drinking. Exactly. That's their superpower? Drink beer, get laid, fight crime. That's the motto. There you go. And they hardly ever use their superpowers. They're just incredibly irresponsible. Sounds like the 1986 Mets. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so but it yeah, ties into sports like that. I mean, yeah. I mean, look, we, we do it all. We do a fantasy comic. Uh, we do sci-fi. Um, I do a, a comic called Weird Biker Tales, where it's like Tales it? of the Crypt meets Sons of Anarchy. How did you get into all this? Uh, I started in screenplays, yeah. and I write screenplays as well. And, uh, you know, when you write screenplays, there's a lot to do. There's a lot of people who work on a film. There's a lot of money involved, and it's very hard. Um, comics is a way to sort of, it's a poor man's film medium. Mm -hmm. You can actually make the movie. I can make weird biker tales without spending $10 million on getting motorcycles and actors and special effects. Have you thought about uh, doing series on television? Have you been ever talked about that, anything like oh, that? Oh, sure. A lot of our comics, we, we have guys approach us all the time looking to do movies and TV shows based on our stuff. You know, that's, that's another whole thing. You go out to L.A., you go, go to any of the cons in L.A., you'll have producers walking all around buying your comics all day long because, you know, they always need content. Right. Uh, one of my big comics right now is called Tales of Pizza. It's about my experiences as a pizza delivery guy. So you delivered pizza? <laughs> I, when, I used to, yeah. yeah. When you were a kid. Yeah, I mean, yeah, 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 yeah. What was that like? It was horrible. Yeah. And <laughs> I was really angry well, and Let me at ask you something. You know, I've watched a lot of uh, movies, maybe, where the pizza delivery boy gets a little lucky. That, that totally happened. I just did a story about that. Wait, wait, you did a story about it. Did it actually happen no, it, to you? No, it totally, well, it almost happened. What happened <laughs> was... <laughs> well, hold on. Went from it it totally, could have happened. It could have happened. But Went you from... have to read the story, see. Okay. Uh, it, it's, uh, it, you know, I had this um, delivery yeah. that the other drivers didn't want to take for some reason. It was a slow night, and I'm like, well, why don't you want to take this? And they're like, no, no, it's okay. Why don't you take it? Why don't you take it? So I said, ah, yeah, I'll take it. What the heck? So I got there, and it was an older woman, and she said, oh, come now, in. Now, you're like 18, 19? Yeah, I'm like 18 or 19. And so how older woman, like 40s? Yeah. She's oh, like, right. she looked like she might have been like a good-looking biker chick at one time, but she has oh, a lot of miles on her right, kind of thing. Yeah. So I'm not, you know, I'm clueless. I'm like, okay, I come in. Oh, no, come in further. I'm like, okay. Well, put the, put the box, the pizza on the table. I'm like, okay, I put it on the table. No, no, on the other side of the table. I go, I don't believe this. And I go, I put it on the other side of the table and bend over, yeah. and she grabs my butt. Wow. And then I'm like... Now I understand why I'm here. Right. And she's like, you know, making all these sexual indu induendos that went over my head, but now they're all like hitting home. I'm like, clang, clang, clang. I'm like, oh, wait. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry. I, yeah, I'm I've just gotta, here to deliver the pizza. Right. And, yeah. and I got to get back in and, and deliver some more pizza. Yeah. And she's literally like grabbing my clothes. And, uh, and I'm just like, no, I'm just here to deliver the pizza. And I swear to you, I swear to you this happened. I got to the front door and her husband is walking up the steps. Oh, my God. And her husband is like a 300-pound guy. He looks like Boss Hogg from Dukes of Hazzard. <laughs> I love that show. He's got a show. cowboy hat on. And he's got our friend. Where did you grow up? In Texas? Yeah, I don't know where I, I'm in New Jersey, and this happens. A cowboy I, hat in, I, in Jersey? I swear to God. And he looks at me, and I'm like, I'm just here to deliver the pizza. I'm just here to deliver the pizza. And he's like, I know, I know, I know. Like, he knew it was going to happen. Yeah. He probably went for a walk, so it'd make it easier on him. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. I'm just like, this is wow. crazy. This so is now crazy you've written house. a comic book about this. And now, yeah, drawn by Vig Starmax is his name. That's my artist's name. He's from Indonesia. He wanted, he didn't want to have a weird name. He didn't want to have his, like, you know, Indonesian name. So he came up with the last name Starmax. <laughs> I think we just lost all our Indonesian viewers. <laughs> he didn't want to have a weird... Oh, I mean, what is that? Why is an Indonesian name weird? I don't know. He he, he wanted to change his name, Maybe I he guess. just wanted a cooler name. I guess he did. I You know, a more memorable name. You can't get a more memorable name than Vig Starmax. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, it's awesome. Exactly, you know, until you get a name like Michael, and Michael Jordan is popular when you're a kid and everybody wants to be like Mike. Sure, that's but cool. Indonesia, that's an incredibly weird name. Why would you, you wouldn't want a name like Michael Jordan in Indonesia, you'd have to have an Indonesian name. Right. Sure, okay. <laughs> so it's uh, webcomicfactory.com. Uh, webcomicfactory.com, superfrat.com. And how much, so how much is this one, I, I really am into this one, post-apocalyptic Nick, how much does this one cost? Uh, that one's four ninety five. you get okay. it signed. Very reasonably. Uh, yeah, you know, I mean, and then you can read tons of stuff for free. We have a graphic novel online called Dealers. That's I like doing it online, pages. and you have an app? We, ha we don't need an app, who needs an app? It's the internet. Yeah, everybody has an app for the internet. It's called an iPad, it's called an iPhone, it's called a smart op, smart tablet iPhone thing. Tony D, he is a maniac. We've got an app and you need to download it. It's yeah, absolutely. Be you, that app you need. <laughs> Beterrific.com slash app. Check him out, webcomicfactory.com. Webcomicfactory.com and you don't need an app to read his stuff. It's super awesome. Thank you, Tony D, for joining us here on Comic-Con Live. Anytime. I'm Michael Artsis, we'll be back. You gotta have an electric kid. Oh, my dog will love it. the electro kids. Look at uh, this. Yeah, your dog, Hello. chewing hazard, choking Hello. hazard. Hopefully not. It'll be fun for you and, and the dog. Here you go, we got, we got a real one. I don't need to take one <laughs> off set for you. And they're from Wowee, so uh, hopefully uh, you enjoy that. It gives you inspiration on your desk. That's what we want to do, inspire people. Tony D, webcomicfactory.com. We'll be back with a whole lot more from Comic-Con Live. Rock Comic -Con. New York!